The rumors were true and you can now use any VST effect to process your audio in real time with Wavelink. How well that works and which things to watch out for when setting up VST effects with the Wave XLR, I'm going to show you in this video. Hey, Julian Kraus here and back when I reviewed the Wave XLR, I mentioned that there is the possibility that we see a VST support in the future and the day has finally come. And in fact, the audio you hear right now is processed with VST effects on the Wave XLR. Now, why is this so interesting, you might ask? Well, there are a lot of things you can do with VST effects. VST, of course, is nothing new, but this allows you to install all kinds of plugins that can be used to process audio. This is commonly used in DAWs like Ableton, GarageBand or FL Studio, just to name a few. But you might also know that OBS, for example, supports VST, which comes in really handy. But let's say you want to process your audio for Discord, TeamSpeak or, God forbid, Skype. Or let's say you're streaming with a software that does not have VST support. Then you're simply out of luck. What if you could process the audio before it was sent to these applications? Well, that's exactly what the new update of the Wavelink lets you do. Let me quickly show you how it works. In Wavelink, you will need to select the folder where you've installed your VST effects and then scan the folder. Once that is done, you can click on the squiggly line symbol and with the plus icon, you can now select one of the installed effects. By the way, if you don't know which effects to start with, I highly recommend the free Rearplug VST package and I have a link to that in the description below. So here you can select the effects. Let's say we want to use an EQ, then I would select Rear EQ and this would be added to the list. By the way, the order of the effects matters. The audio is processed from the top down. So if you use multiple effects, place them in the desired order. You can bypass all effects for either the stream or your headphones with the toggles below. One important point is that these effects are not calculated on the interface directly, but on your PC instead. The signal from the microphone will be sent from the Wave XLR to the PC, then the selected VST effects are applied and then the audio will be sent to an application or also back to the Wave XLR so you are able to monitor the sound with the effects applied. This sending to the PC, processing the audio and sending it back so that you can hear it takes some time. So the audio will inevitably have some amount of latency. If this latency is low, it's usually not a big deal, but if it gets too high, it results in a speech jamming type effect where you can hear your own voice back just a little later, which confuses the hell out of your brain. So the big question is how high is the monitoring latency with the VST processing on the Wave XLR? That's what I had a closer look at and here's what I found. FYI, these numbers were measured with the version 1.4.0.2691 and these might change slightly in the future with updates. If I notice this, then I will pin a comment to this video. Okay, so as stated in my review, when the Wave XLR is set to direct monitoring, the audio from the input is routed straight to your headphones and then the latency is about 3.4 milliseconds in the worst case. That's very quick and this latency is hardly noticeable. When we instead use the Wavelink software to loop through the audio and don't have any effects applied, I measured a latency of 21 and 14 milliseconds respectively. Yes, the latency is affected by the set sample rate and that's why I highly recommend to use 96K with the Wave XLR to keep the latency as short as possible. Now, 21 and 14 milliseconds are of course quite a bit higher compared to the 3 milliseconds of the direct monitoring and you can definitely notice that. But these numbers are not that relevant as there is no processing applied yet, just looping through Wavelink. As soon as I apply a VST effect to the audio channel, the latency rises to 32 and 20 milliseconds. I want to note that I've chosen an effect which does not add any latency on its own, so the numbers here are the time that it takes the audio to be sent to the PC, the VST processing applied and then sent back to the headphones. And 32 and 20 milliseconds delay you can definitely hear. Right now I've overlaid my voice a second time with a shift of 32 milliseconds and you can easily hear like an echo. And this is roughly what you would hear in your headphones while monitoring your own voice with VST effects. When you set the sample rate to 96k, the latency drops to 20 milliseconds, and this is how that would roughly sound like in your headphones. Still not perfect, but it is already quite a bit better. I mean, it's a whole 12 milliseconds less latency. So again, it's a good idea to stick with 96k sample rate on the Wave XLR. 
A few notes on the VST effects themselves, as they too can add some latency. I tested the rear plug effects and generally the EQ, compressor and gate do not add any latency to speak of. Even multiple instances do not affect the latency. Although in the gate there is a setting called pre-open and in the compressor pre-comp and these sliders add latency depending on where you set them to. So I would avoid these settings for real-time processing. What does add a lot of latency is the rear fear effect. This is an FFT based effect which can be used as an EQ or also for noise suppression. As an FFT effect it has an FFT size and depending on where you set the set it adds at least 1.3 milliseconds on the lowest setting and it goes up all the way to a few hundred milliseconds and then you really can hear your voice double. So either use the lowest FFT size possible or try to stay away from this effect completely if low latency is critical. I think the VST processing in the Wavelength software is a very cool feature and it would be nice to see more interfaces that utilize VST effects for processing audio in real time. That said, the current VST implementation in the Wavelink cannot reach the latency performance of effects that are calculated directly on an interface, but that was to be expected. With the VST effects you also have to be a bit cautious as the latency can be heavily impacted by the type of effect and the specific settings that you choose. But trust me, you will quickly notice that when you listen to the audio. I also hope that there are ways for Elgato to improve the latency performance of the VST processing a bit, as with a sample rate of 48 kHz, the latency was quite high and it started to have a bit of a speech jamming effect. So it's not perfect, but it's still a nice addition to Wavelink and WaveXLR, especially when you set the sample rate to 96 kHz then it is quite usable and the VST effects give you a lot of flexibility for audio processing. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more content like this. And I will see you all in the next one.